we're asked to consider the initial value problem involving the first order differential equation with the given initial condition. Existence and uniqueness is guaranteed at all points except those with which t values or y values. Looking at our notes below, if we have a first order differential equation in this form with this initial condition, if f of t comma y, which is the right side of the differential equation, and partial of f with respect to y are continuous on a rectangular region defined by this interval for t and this interval for y that contains the point t sub zero comma y sub zero, this is the initial condition, then there exists an interval centered at t sub zero and a unique function y of t defined on the interval that satisfies the initial value problem. So what this means is for this problem, we need to figure out which values of t and which values of y we must exclude in order for both f of t comma y and the partial f with respect to y to be continuous. So let's set this up on the next slide. The first step is to make sure the given differential equation is in the correct form, meaning it's solved for dy dt, or in our case y prime, which it is, and therefore the right side is f of t comma y, which I've already identified. We could write the cube root using a rational exponent as I've done here. And now let's also find the partial of f with respect to y. So we differentiate f with respect to y, treating t as a constant. So using this form, the partial of f with respect to y would be equal to one over the quantity four t squared minus seven times the derivative of the quantity five y minus eight to the one third with respect to y, which would be one third, times the quantity five y minus eight raised to the power of one third minus one, that's negative two thirds, times the derivative of five y minus eight with respect to y, which would be five. Simplifying, partial of f with respect to y is equal to, let's write this as five all over three times the quantity four t squared minus seven times the quantity five y minus eight raised to the power of positive two thirds. Now let's go back up to f of t comma y and find any restrictions on t or y. Looking at the numerator, because the index is odd, there are no restrictions on the quantity five y minus eight. It can be negative, zero, or positive. If the index was even though, we know the radicand couldn't be negative. But again, in this case, because the index is odd, there are no restrictions on the quantity five y minus eight looking at the denominator, we know we can't have division by zero, which means four t squared minus seven can't equal zero. So if we solve this for t, we can find the restrictions on t where f of t comma y would not be continuous. So we'll go ahead and add seven to both sides, divide by four. So we have t squared can't equal seven fourths We'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. So we'll have t can't equal, well the square root of four is equal to two, so we have t can't equal plus or minus the square root of seven divided by two. What is the decimal approximation? This is approximately plus or minus 1.3229. So this tells us that f of t comma y is continuous everywhere except at these two t values. And now let's look for any restrictions for the partial of f with respect to y. Well notice how we do have a factor of four t squared minus seven in the denominator. So the partial of f with respect to y also has the restriction four t squared minus seven can't equal zero. So this partial derivative is also not continuous at these t values. But also notice how the quantity five y minus eight also can't equal zero we'd also have division by zero. So the restriction on y is that five y minus eight can't equal zero. Solving for y, we would add eight, divide by five. So y can't equal eight fifths, or if we want, 1.6. So these are the restrictions on t and y where both f of t comma y and the partial of f with respect to y would not be continuous. 
So going back to our first slide, existence and uniqueness is guaranteed at all points except those with t sub zero equals negative square root seven divided by two comma positive square root seven divided by two or y sub zero equals eight fifths. Remember the decimal approximations for these would be approximately negative 1.3229 and positive 1.3229. I hope you found this helpful.